In this video, I'm going to talk about the concept of organizational structure and the project manager's role within a given structure. Keep in mind that your role won't be the same for every team or organization because many companies are structured differently. But this overview will serve as a foundation for wherever you work. So what is organizational structure? Organizational structure refers to the way a company or organization is arranged or structured. This structure also tells you how job tasks are divided and coordinated and how all the different members of the organization relate to one another. In other words, organizational structure gives you a sense of who reports to who. But organizational structure is much more than that. Understanding the different types of organizational structures can serve as a map to help you determine where you fit in, who you should communicate with, and how frequently to communicate with them. Now that we have a basic overview of the definition of organizational structure, let's look at the various organizational hierarchies that you may encounter at work. An organization structure is most commonly mapped out using a reporting chart or org chart, which is short for organizational chart. Reporting charts show the relationship between people and groups within the organization and details who each person or group reports to. There are a few different types of organizational structures, but for this course, we're going to focus on two of the more popular ones, classic and matrix. Let's start with classic. The classic grouping includes what are usually called functional or top-down structures. The classic grouping follows a typical chain of command where the chief executive officer, also known as CEO, and other executives are at the top, followed by directors or managers, then their direct reports, and so on. Each of these directors or managers typically oversee teams within their function of the organization, like marketing, sales, or human resources. You can see this type of structure in effect by looking at a branch of the military. Take the army, for example. You may enter the army as a private and report up to a sergeant who oversees multiple people in your squad. And that sergeant ultimately reports up to a lieutenant and so on. If your organization works in this structure, as the project manager, you might communicate regularly with your manager, the person directly above you, and also with your peers who work on the same types of projects as you. But it isn't always a straightforward top-down approach. There are other factors at play that make organizational structures a bit more complicated than we can see on paper. For instance, you may have project teams that sit across different functions. This is common in many companies, Google included, and is usually referred to as the matrix structure. You might think of a matrix structure as a grid, where you still have people above you, but you also have people in adjacent departments who expect to hear updates on your work progress. These people may not be your direct bosses, but you are responsible for communicating with them since they may inform changes to your work. For example, at Google, we have the major functions of marketing, sales, and more, with a traditional reporting chain. But we also have programs for our products, like Google Search, where project teams consist of program managers, engineers, user experience, or UX designers, and so on. And each team member reports to their own management chains. Another example is my organization. It's called Global Affairs. I have a direct manager who oversees the work I do in my core role and who is responsible for delivering my performance reviews. But because I work with multiple people across other teams and specialties, I often get asked to manage projects where I'm informally working with lead program managers in other organizations. Similar to my own manager, I provide updates to that program manager, seek their approval, and solicit feedback on our partnership and progress. So to recap, the classic structure follows a traditional top-down system of reporting, and the matrix structure has direct higher ups to report to and stakeholders from other departments or programs. Knowing which kind of organizational structure you're working in plays a major role in how you prepare for and carry out your project, or even in an interview. During an interview, you can ask about the type of organizational structure the company uses and where your role will fit in. This will help you and the interviewer communicate clearly about the people you will engage with daily and the expectations for the role. 
an organization's structure provides the framework for accountability and communication. As the project manager, it's vital that you understand who you're reporting to on each project, and just as importantly, who the members of your team report to. Knowing the organizational structure also tells you how and where to get the resources you'll need so you can get the project done efficiently. When you understand the organization's structure, you'll be able to identify how it impacts the way you manage the project. One way organizational structure can impact the way you manage a project is by the amount of authority given to the project manager. Authority has to do with your ability to make decisions for the project that impact the organization. In some cases, you might have the authority to do things like select the vendors who provide services or goods for the project. Other times, you might have a set of vendors selected for you. Your level of authority and responsibility will vary from project to project. Another way organizational structures can impact project management is through resource availability. Managing a project is a lot easier when you know how to access the people, equipment, and budget that you need. Let's explore how different structures can affect the way you manage a project. In a classic structure, you might find yourself with less authority and a tighter scope. You may need to rely on getting approval from the appropriate managers, directors, and department heads in order to move forward and complete certain tasks. In this case, it's likely that these people are in charge of the people on your team and the resources you need. As a project manager, working in a classic structure, you may depend on the managers in your organization to approve resources. In other words, the amount of people working on your project or the budget that you have allocated to your project is decided by the leaders of your department or function. In a classic structure, you may have to go through a chain of approvals and advocate for more resources if you need them. For example, if you need a budget increase, you would report this to your manager. Then your manager might escalate this up to their management chain to get approval. That's the classic structure, a traditional top-down arrangement of employees and authority. Now, let's explore the matrix structure. The main difference with a matrix structure is that employees often have two or more managers or leaders they'll need to work with and update. Your team members will have their functional manager and you, the project manager. If members are working on multiple projects, they may have even more managers. This can affect your authority as a project manager, as you will need to cooperate with more than one leader in the organization. You may need to share resources and negotiate priorities. The key is to make sure you know who your stakeholders are and who controls what, since the chain of command isn't always as clearly defined as in the classic structure. Because there isn't always a clear chain of command in a matrix structure, you need to make sure you have identified and communicated with anyone you might need to report to and get approval from well before the project begins. Once this is established though, your project within a matrix structure should be able to run efficiently. Matrix structures emphasize a strong project focus from the team and the organization. So you as the project manager generally have more autonomy to make decisions and gather resources as needed. As I hope you've noticed, the way an organization is structured can have a big impact on the planning and execution of your project. Understanding all of this will help you run and manage a project much more efficiently. Next, I'll tell you about organizational culture, another factor that impacts how you manage your project. Catch you in a bit. Let's begin with two quick questions. What do you know about culture? And how do you define culture? When I hear the term culture, the first things that come to mind are things like languages, food, clothing, and types of dress. It's important to note that there are other, maybe less obvious, but just as impactful parts of culture, like beliefs, traditions, and customs. When we learn about someone's culture, we gain a much deeper insight and more complete picture into who they are and how they navigate the world. The same can be true for organizations. An organization's culture provides context and acts as a guide for what their people value, how they operate on a daily basis, how they relate to one another, and how they can be expected to perform. There are many ways to define organizational culture. 
Some definitions emphasize teamwork and innovation, while others focus on attention to detail and achievement. Entire thesis papers, workshops, and conferences are dedicated to defining and analyzing organizational culture. We only have a few minutes here, so I'll do my best to sum it up. Organizational culture is, in part, the values employees share, as well as the organization's values, mission, history, and so on. In other words, organizational culture can be thought of as the company's personality. Understanding an organization's culture will help you navigate your team more effectively toward achieving the project's goal. It also impacts the way you plan your project. You'll need to be familiar with an organization's culture so that you can minimize conflict and complete the project with as much support and harmony as possible. An organization's mission and values can provide clues to its culture. If you can demonstrate how the project supports the company's mission or how the project aligns with the company's values, you'll have more support from executives and stakeholders to get the approvals and resources you need. Pay attention to what leaders in the organization value when conducting business. Does the management team care about speed over perfection? How do people within the organization make decisions? Do they thoroughly examine every option for every decision? This will help inform which values are the most important to them and how you can approach your decision making. If you're ever stuck in your project and need guidance about making a certain decision or are unsure how to communicate with someone in the organization, reviewing the mission and values may help direct you toward the right way to handle that situation. Here's an example. If the company values stability and user feedback, it might encourage expanding the project timeline to allow for testing and then making decisions based on those testing results. If the company values innovation and revenue growth, it might encourage a shorter timeline to get the product out faster and taking some risks to try out new ideas. As a project manager, when you understand the different types of values and what to prioritize, you'll have an idea of how you can better prepare for conversations within the organization. Ideally, you'll wanna have a good sense of an organization's culture before you start the first phase of your project. If you are interviewing for a project management position, asking about the culture is a great way to get more information about the company. It also shows the interviewer that you're knowledgeable about the impact culture can have on a project. To help you gain a better sense of an organization's culture, consider the following questions. How do people prefer to communicate? Is it primarily through scheduled meetings, via email, over the phone? How are decisions made? Majority vote or top-down approvals? What kinds of rituals are in place when someone new comes to the office? Are they taken out to lunch, given a tour of the building, or introduced to the staff? How are projects typically run? Do they prefer a classic? Do they prefer matrix or some other style of project management? And finally, what kinds of practices, behaviors, and values are reflected by the people in the organization? Is overtime or weekend work an expectation? Are there company-sanctioned social events? Finding out what the company values will tell you a lot about the culture and how to handle communication, manage expectations, and identify potential conflicts as you work through your project. Once you begin working on a project, here are some ways to navigate company culture that will help you get the most out of your team and ensure that your project is supported. As I just discussed, make sure to ask questions. As you observe the culture, try asking your peers what they think is going well and what they would change. Your peers may have the same opinion as you, and if not, you may learn something new you didn't learn in the interview process. Either way, you'll be in a better place to assess risk, adjust your current project, or be more prepared for projects in the future. It's also a good idea to make observations. It's important to understand how things work and what people like and respect about the company's culture. When working in different geographies, it's also important to be aware of established customs like bowing, shaking hands, or wearing head coverings. This will help you gain understanding and form respectful relationships. Lastly, it's important to understand your impact. Be aware of your role as a change agent. A change agent is someone who helps the organization transform by focusing on improving organizational effectiveness and development. You and your project will most likely affect the organization in some way. 
Sometimes just the presence of a project manager creates changes in the office environment or employee dynamics. If your project requires major changes that the organization must adapt to, be mindful of how extreme those changes could be and seek feedback and approval early on. The company may not agree with certain kinds of changes that don't seem to fall in line with their mission, vision, or culture. It's important to recognize the limits or boundaries of changes to implement and understand what would be the most beneficial for the project and the company overall. As you can see, organizational culture has a strong influence over how decisions are made about the project. The way an organization is structured usually influence the type of culture that exists. So it's important to consider both structure and culture when planning and carrying out your project. Coming up, we'll talk about the way your project can create change in the workplace and how to get stakeholders and employees on board with implementing your project. Let's talk about change management. Sometimes the deliverable of a project is a new tool or new process that must be adopted by the organization. You've just learned that understanding organizational structure and culture will help you plan for and manage your project. It will also help you roll out changes from your project to an organization. In project management, the process of delivering your completed project and getting people to adopt it is called change management. Understanding change management can ensure that a project is completed successfully and that the organization accepts and adopts the recommendations from the project. For example, if you were launching a new time tracking system for employees, the project wouldn't be successful if the employees didn't adopt the new system. When you understand change management and your role in the process, it can ensure a smooth rollout of changes and easier adoption. Adoption is often the first step to your project having the desired impact once it goes live. So let's get started. As a new project manager, you may not be responsible for planning all of the required change management for your project. But regardless, you can help the success of the project by understanding your role in the process and how your organization may react to that change. It's important to recognize that it's the people in an organization who are directly impacted by any changes in the workplace. Implementing a new project can mean changes to processes, budgets, schedules, and employee roles and responsibilities. Even aesthetic changes, like building a new wing, renovating the lobby, or switching to a new company logo, means employees will have to adjust to something new and different. Something as simple as adding a new logo can lead to a major headache for the employees who have to swap out all the old stationery and make sure everyone in the office is using the new logo correctly. When you consider the success of your project, it's important to keep in mind the changes that people will need to implement as a result. Thinking through these changes will set you up for success in getting your project accepted and adopted. There are many change management models and strategies, and a quick internet search will provide you with more explanations and examples than you will probably ever need. While we have additional readings on change management coming up, feel free to read on any articles on the topic from well-respected project management organizations to keep learning. Though there are lots of different models, they all share the same general concepts. Change management in project management is centered around three core concepts and best practices. The first core concept is creating a sense of ownership and urgency around the project. Ownership means getting others to feel like they are empowered to take responsibility for the successful completion of their tasks. Urgency means getting them to understand that the project is important and to identify what actions need to be taken to move the project along. When team members feel a sense of ownership and urgency around a project, it increases interest, motivation, and engagement with the project outcome. Another core concept is to figure out the right combination of skills and personalities when selecting the people who will work on your team. Find people whose knowledge and skills complement one another. If your team is selected for you, see if you're able to choose who gets assigned which tasks. And if that's not possible, then it's extra important for you to find ways to connect with your team. This will get them excited about the project, so then they can be advocates for change when it's needed. One effective way of motivating your team is to communicate clearly your vision and approach for the project. Then you can share how you see everyone working together 
as a team to make it happen. Communicating this idea clearly allows others to share in your vision and take ownership in bringing it to life. The final core concept is that ever important one, effective communication. And I can't stress this enough. Communication is key. Having effective communication with your team means being transparent and upfront with your plans and ideas and making information available. Make sure your team, along with the rest of the organization, is kept up to date on your progress. This will allow everyone to feel like they are included and part of the project. Once your project is complete, you may experience some resistance or a few roadblocks. Remember, change doesn't happen overnight, so don't give up on it yet. If you do get some pushback, you can move the process along by helping folks adjust, rewarding their efforts, and reminding them of the overall value the project is providing long term. Understanding the change process can help you determine how you can support a successful response to your project. For example, understanding the importance of communication will help you be mindful of clearly communicating project plans to your team, as well as communicating the expected impact of the project with the rest of the organization. Remember learning about agile project management? Well, since it's a popular methodology that you'll probably use at some point, I wanted to point out that many of the principles of agile project management align with successful change management. How might an agile team approach change management, you ask? Well, being receptive to change is a core value in agile teams. So you will often find that they are in a state of evolution or are constantly adapting to change. If this seems like a lot to remember, no stress. We'll continue learning more about these concepts throughout the course. Just know, as the project manager, you can enact effective change management approaches in all of your interactions. Change management is actually a huge undertaking and a project in itself. As mentioned, you may not always be responsible for leading and planning the entire end-to-end -end change management process. Instead, you may ask a member of the project team, your manager, or another senior leader to help take on that transition. If you are participating in change management, then someone else is responsible for successfully implementing the changes. Let's say you've just completed the project of creating the new check-in system. The project is now at the point where it needs to be installed and adopted by the organization, but you don't have the formal authority or influence to enact this change. Your role as a project manager, then, doesn't include getting employees to use the new system. That's someone else's job. But just because you are not the one directly calling for or leading the change, there are still ways in which you can and should participate. And that's what this section is about the process of handing off the project and the ways in which you, as the project manager who created the new system, can stay involved. Being empathetic to the challenges of change management can help you support the process in subtle ways. In this case, participating in change management might mean communicating with employees throughout the project about how the system will provide a better experience for their customers. You support the process by providing employees with information so they feel prepared to adjust to changes once the system is ready to launch. Since participating in change management is such a big part of being a successful project manager, I want to take you through a few examples so you can see how this might play out in different types of organizations. You'll see how to combine your knowledge of organizational structure and culture to make decisions about planning for the change management process. Let's explore the same pharmacy check-in project in two different organizational structures and with different team cultures to understand how these ideas are applied. Say the pharmacy chain is a classic organizational structure and has an informal corporate culture. The final project requires a name change from the old check-in system called Speedy Care to the new system called Speedy Check-in. Getting this change implemented is an example of change management. As the project manager, you need to participate in the change management process by communicating the project needs through the appropriate channels. In this case, the chief executive officer, or CEO, sends an email to the C-suite. Now, these are all the chief level officers in an organization. The CEO lets them know that the name must be changed and to please inform their teams to implement the name change. 
Since this is a classic structure within a hierarchical organization, the budgets are managed separately, and the marketing department needs to request an extra $10,000 to change all of their printed posters for the stores. This request goes back up to the chief financial officer, or CFO. There may be other cost adjustments and process changes that need to happen across the organization to ensure a successful system name change. In this instance, you may need to have multiple meetings with others to help them understand what is changing and why. Now suppose that the pharmacy chain is a matrix organization structure and has a formal corporate culture. What does change management look like in this scenario? Well, you might meet with representatives from marketing and technology to explain the overall budget impact for all the necessary changes. With the formal culture, you might write a document that describes all budget, timeline, and training impacted by the name change. Then you might circulate that document to get feedback and alignment from all the stakeholders and share that feedback with the CEO so they can understand the full scope of the name change. The feedback and alignment from the stakeholders will tell the CEO how the change management process went. Did everyone agree on the implications? Was the feedback positive or was there resistance? Then, when the CEO needs to communicate the name change to the entire organization, she may have someone on her team write up a formal memo that describes why the name change needs to happen and share out the memo to her staff and their teams. Keep in mind, these are just examples, and every organization's structure, team culture, and change management processes are going to be different. But understanding this framework can help you navigate how to effectively participate in and support change management. This understanding can allow you to ask yourself questions that will inform change management, such as how will the organization react to change? Which influencers can affect change? What are the best means of communication? What change management practices will lead to the successful implementation of my project? And so on. The answers to these questions will help you prepare for a variety of possible scenarios and craft solutions to effectively support the adoption of your project. They will also help you navigate possible challenges along the way and lead your project through a successful change management process. Congratulations on finishing this video in the Google Project Management Certificate. Access the full learning experience, including job search help, and start to earn your official certificate by clicking on the icon. To view the next course in this video, click here. And subscribe to our channel to learn more from Google Career Certificates.